bless you all. It's lovely to see you all. And a special welcome for um, everyone who is visiting today. Uh, I just want to say that uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be back, even though I'm a little bit croaky. It's, uh, it's great to be here with you, and I was really looking forward to coming back today and, and seeing you all, especially because we've got such a great Harvest Festival service and a special speaker, our Reverend David Stephen Butler. And, uh, and of course, thank you for everyone who's contributed to the, um, the flowers and the, the, the marvellous display of this uh, seed spreader here. It's absolutely wonderful, isn't it? To see that. It's a blast from the past. Um, of course, we are here to worship God. So let's, um, let's just start everything that we do with that frame of mind. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord here to your service. We submit ourselves to you as your people. Come Lord and help us to worship you and adore you. Come Lord to help us to acknowledge you and praise you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, just, I mean, we've got to do a couple of notices here. Uh, for the, the main notice that I want to bring to your attention is that um, today and whenever we start Breakfast Church, which is on the 31st, is not the grand opening of Breakfast Church. It is the start of us trialing and trying to get things right and practicing as it were and tweaking as we go along. It's not the grand opening. The grand opening will be sometime in the future when we feel as a church that, that we're getting it together. Um, yeah, so we'll have meetings about that. But we will be having uh, the the opening when we first start that on the 31st of October. But as we're just working towards it, just like today, you've got teas and coffees on the tables and it's a lovely, it's a lovely atmosphere where we're drinking and being with one another. And uh, yeah. So, and that's the only notice that I wanted to bring up, unless there was something else in particular, nothing in particular, I'm being told. So in that case, let us uh, sing our first harvest song, um, All Things Bright and Beautiful, and the children can sing as loud as they want. Sky. All things bright 
So um, David is from the uh, BMS, Baptist Missionary Society, talking to us today. And part of our short, short talk is something that David's going to bring to us, which is a video that we we're going to watch now. So do you want to just introduce that? Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. My name is David, as you've heard, but most men my age are called David. And uh, <laughs> it's a joy to be here with you on behalf of what used to be called the Baptist Missionary Society. And it's now got the snappy title of BMS World Mission. Um, I last did um, services for them in 1983, would you believe? I know I don't look old enough. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a joy in my very early, very premature retirement uh, to be doing uh, some of these services. Um, I'm still um, very much involved with uh, getting together with uh, former colleagues uh, with BMS from all over the world. I serve myself in what was Zaire, and it's now called the Congo again. Uh, the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, so-called. It's not democratic, it's not a republic, it's a dictatorship, but that's another story. Um, and um, we're, we're focusing today on what BMS is doing in various locations in the world, uh, including Africa, but uh, today it's more North Africa and uh, the Islamic-dominated um, part of the country. I bring to you, of the continent rather, I bring to you the greetings of Emmanuel Baptist Church in South Sea, uh, where I live. Uh, and if you don't know where South Sea is, it, it's the posh bit of Portsmouth. <laughs> you know, like Brighton and Hove, actually. Well, we're, we're, we're the posh bit. And uh, it was great joy yesterday to be worshipping uh, with some 60 or so people there to celebrate the birth of our pastor and his wife's uh, child two years ago. Thanks to COVID and a series of lockdowns, it was a rather delayed dedication, but we, we had uh, a great uh, occasion together. Uh, now, I nearly moved to Lewis when I was 10 years old in 1966. We also nearly moved to Australia at that time with my father's work. He is a chartered structural engineer. And as I say, we nearly came to Lewis. Dad is now 90, he'd forgotten about the uh, abortive move to your fair town. I almost said city, but you're, you're not a city yet, are you? Her Majesty the Queen is going to bestow <laughs> city status, I believe on one town from England, Wales and Scotland. Um, not sure if Lewis is uh, a contender for that. I think there are other more prestigious, dare I say, places like York and Lancaster, even South End that might be uh, in the offing for that. But it was good to explore the town yesterday. I went mountaineering. I climbed to the, the top of the, the castle. South Sea, by the way, is on Portsea Island, which is completely flat. And the only slight rise is, is the railway bridge at Fratton. But so uh, it was uh, quite an opportunity. Uh, anyway, um, in just a moment, we're going to see a video about what BMS uh, world Mission and their workers are doing to support Christians in difficult contexts and to support mission workers. And I'm sure you'll find this very challenging, very inspiring, and this will form the, the basis for our thoughts a little later on in the service. Thank you, Tim. I saw Jesus 2,000 years ago 
I was watching a vision. It wasn't like a dream. I was there with them. I saw he had 12 students. I saw him healing people, preaching. I hadn't read the Bible, but I saw it happening. When I woke up from the vision, I went to my neighbor, who I knew was a Christian. I told her my story, and she fell to the ground and couldn't say a word. She gave me a Bible and opened it in Matthew. It was unbelievable. What I read, that is what I had seen. In that moment, something inside me changed. The next two weeks were the best two weeks of my life. I was in a very hard situation, and my situation did not change, but I changed. My life started from that moment. I didn't tell anyone I was a Christian because I was afraid. Two years later, I moved countries. I tried every church, but they refused to baptize me. It's an Islamic country. If you change from Islam to Christianity, it really costs lives. I was learning the Bible by myself and searching for eight years. Then God found me a private teacher. It was a miracle. I learned and I started telling my family. I started with my brother. He accepted Jesus. Then I told my older sister, she accepted Jesus. Most of my family are Christians now. After that, we started this small ministry. We're helping people who are in need. We do work here and in my home country. In my home country, so many people became Christians, like 1,200 people. When the neighbors saw this, they tried to harm these people, but the Christians didn't care even if it cost them their lives. I don't know exactly what will happen, but I want to serve God. When my mom found out I was a Christian, she said, I bore you in my womb, but I wish I didn't. Choosing to follow Christ was not easy. I'm from a Muslim background, and I saw myself on one side and my parents on the other. And I wondered, am I right and they're wrong? I would have rather been wrong and them right. There was no physical violence, but they stopped talking to me. My mom and dad are really dear to me. It was really hard. When my parents stopped talking to me, I was called into full-time ministry. At first, I wanted to have both my family and the truth. But the truth has set me free and I cannot not speak it. My ministry is on Facebook, which is really effective for reaching people. I remain anonymous, which gives people more freedom to talk. The people I talk with are Muslims. I understand the people who message with questions because I was once there. I want to learn more so I may be ready to answer as many questions as possible. I miss my family a lot. I do long for them, but I just don't want to give up Jesus. The Lord has performed a lot of miracles for me. He takes care of me. He answers my questions. The little details, they all add up. And when I think of them all, I can't but give all I have for him. I made a promise that I would not let any Christians live in my area. Nor would I let any church nearby survive. I was born into an orthodox Hindu family. I joined an extremist Hindu group and my life's main goal was to catch Christians and beat them up. One day, I met a man and he asked me, Why are you doing this? Why are you attacking people who have not done anything to you? And he gave me a New Testament and said, Why don't you read it? I started reading the New Testament and then almost every day I wanted to read that book. I saw how, how Jesus taught his disciples to pray and I learned to pray like that. And then one day I read, 
what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul and it hit me after that i secretly started meeting with the christians and learning from them my village discovered i'd become a christian and they tried to throw me out they separated from me and said we will not give you water to drink and we will not associate with you it's uh, it's been more than 20 years and i am still separated from some of my village but now out of 30 families living here 22 families have come to know jesus and i pray that one day it will become an entirely christian village i also now oversee 150 small groups in my region i know that following the lord is not easy i've suffered persecution and had terrible things done to me but in all of that i i have hope the lord jesus came into my life taking me from persecution to praise is everything to me he is life i pray that i will be able to complete the vision that that god has given me to reach out to as many people as i can We've got good news to share with people and in leafy lewis we don't necessarily see the difficulties that other people do face around the world and it's surprising how much what we can do to help in other countries um, whether it's financially prayerfully uh, encouraging them if you know somebody in another country who's uh, a christian you can email them there's lots of different ways to to help and it'd be surprised also that even a little thing goes a long way when people are having a tough time it really matters let's sing our next uh, song together it's called come now is the time to worship time to worship come now is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before Now is the time to give 
invite David back up again and uh, he's going to bring the reading for us and then uh, bring God's word to us afterwards I'm just going to pray for him and then hand over to him Father I thank you that you've allowed and enabled David to come to us today I pray that the word that you've put on his heart will be uh, a sharp sword and poignant for us in our lives here today and Lord, I pray that you would speak through him, as we really want to hear what you've got to say, Lord. Please bless him and strengthen him. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Bible reading today is uh, from Matthew 10. Uh, some of the very hard sayings, very challenging sayings of the Lord Jesus uh, to his disciples as he trained them at the beginning of his ministry. John 10, 1 to 22, and then 32 to 41. Sorry, did I say John? Matthew, I do apologize. I've no idea where John came from. It's a great chapter, John 10, about having life and having life more abundantly, but I have Matthew open in front of me. Thank you, Jackie. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving. Let your peace rest on it. If it is not let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. 
I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what, you, what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Continue at verse 32. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. If anyone loves their father or mother more than me, is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. May I ask you to close your eyes briefly for this spiritual imagination. Just repeat the words of Jesus that I've just read. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Imagine for a moment that you are a totally isolated believer. Perhaps your experience at home during the coronavirus pandemic meant that you were separated and alone. Perhaps on Zoom you are alone at the moment. Remember for most of us who are now able to gather again for worship together, how it felt. Not only were we unable to be physically with people, we were unable to have physical contact, a hand clasp or a hug. We were unable to attend public worship for there was none. For some, the believers that we're thinking about today in North Africa and elsewhere, it's always like that. Imagine that church for you is just sitting alone, perhaps not knowing another Christian at all. How will you grow? How will you worship? How will you get strength? As we've already heard in that video, family and friends turn their back. As we follow Jesus, there's no chats and there's no welcome. And now I invite you to rejoin me and everyone as you open your eyes and we give thanks for the positivity of our situation today. We are all part of one body. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 to 27 says this, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Already we have received challenges from those testimonies that we heard. Genuine testimonies, those are the words of believers in difficult circumstances. Their names have been abbreviated or changed for obvious reasons. Today, above all else, there is a challenge to those of us with the freedom that we are enjoying today. 
to pray for courageous Christians to share the good news in their difficult situations. For those who are rejected by their families, as in North Africa, how would we have felt if our mother had said that to us as she did to that woman whose testimony we heard? We pray and we give thanks for church planters in Asia, that former Hindu fanatic who delighted in persecuting Christians, founding house churches, 22 out of the 30 families in his village are now Christians. But he thought that wasn't enough. His ambition is for all 30 families to be Christians there. We're called today, those of us who are blessed with such freedom, to think and pray for isolated Christians, to find other Christians to encourage them. And as I led us in that brief exercise at the beginning of this talk, I thought, wow. I was privileged to be taking part in uh, Zoom services during those difficult days. We even had coffee together over Zoom afterwards, and I believe coffee will be part of your setup here today. We are called today to uh, support BMS World Mission in their ministries of reaching out, praying that believers and workers will know when to speak and what to say. We are being encouraged today. We are being challenged today to, I know it sounds horribly American, to think big, that thousands of people will experience whole life transformation. Modern methods are being used to spread the gospel as well as the traditional one-to-one -one and public preaching where that's possible. One young man called Ali in North Africa was, and I don't know if he still is, was a staunch Muslim. And via the internet, he listed four reasons why he couldn't believe in Jesus. He said, God is unique in deity. Nobody can share in the deity of the one God. Only God can satisfy needs. Why turn to Jesus, who is less strong than God? Classic uh, Muslim line, God has no son. Jesus was born of a woman, Mary. God was not born. And fourthly, he said, God is not identical to anyone in creation. How would you, how should we answer Ali? The Christian faith to him is incompatible with everything he has been taught about God. And there's a challenge to us today. How often do we take into account the beliefs of others to consider how to explain the Christian faith? I've already told you that I live in South Sea and uh, we, we have um, one big mosque and one or two uh, smaller mosques in the area. And uh, before lockdown, I used to uh, get buses uh, everywhere, really. I now walk a lot and uh, I'm three stone lighter as a result of that. And I re remember engaging a number of Muslim men in conversation at bus stops. Now, I have extremely limited knowledge of Arabic, but I can say hello and put one or two things together. And just through saying, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you, they're absolutely amazed that someone has made the effort to engage with them. And I said, I take it you're, you're going to mosque. Yes, I go five times a day. And, I, and then I say... Well, actually, I'm a Christian and I'm on a way uh, to a Bible study on the way to a Bible study of prayer meeting now. And they look absolutely stunned because in the presumably decades they've been living in South Sea, no Christian has interacted with them and said, I'm on my way to a Christian place of worship. There then came the classic, you believe that Jesus is the son of God, don't you? And I've now learned to answer back, I hope in a polite and uh, gracious way, I say, well, yes, but we actually believe that Jesus is more than the son of God in the sense that you're thinking about him. We believe that he is God, the son, that everything it's possible to know about God is in Jesus. It's a far bigger claim than you've been told about us. Absolutely stunning. And just through those simple conversations, I trust that seeds 
have been sown. How often do we take into account the beliefs of others? And although I'm uh, today is focused very much on sharing the faith in, in a Muslim and indeed other you know, Hindu and other world religions context, I was uh, talking to uh, a guy who's become a friend of mine, Stuart, who is a security guard in the uh, Royal Navy swimming pool where I swim most days. And Stuart is a rough, tough, working class lad but through banter over, over uh, the months, I was actually able on Friday to share the Christian faith. And I, I was absolutely amazed. I hadn't planned it. I, I was quite stunned at how fluent I was being. It was the Holy Spirit, I'm sure, prompting me. And he said something quite remarkable. You're wasting your time. It's like knocking a nail into a plank of wood. And I said, well, it's funny you should say that, because the central part of the Christian faith is Jesus being nailed to a cross. And he was absolutely stunned. In fact, he was stunned into silence, which was quite is quite unusual for Stuart. So the challenge today, as we think about Christians in difficult circumstances, the challenge is that we should be engaging um, with them in prayer. We should consider giving, but we should also consider our own witness and testimony. Uh, very moving words indeed uh, from a believer in the Middle East who says this, I want to tell others about Jesus so that they too may know him. When I told my mother about my new faith, she wouldn't talk to me for five months, but I thank the Lord that the relationship was restored. I constantly try to tell my family about Jesus and because of that, my youngest brother accepted Christ and got baptized. We give thanks for such testimonies and we pray for such people. Now, obviously, most of us have freedom in the UK to live out our faith and to share it in whatever ways occur to us. BMS World Mission supports the incredibly believers in the world we've heard about in the I Will Stand video. Jesus is worth it all, is their view, and they want others to tell and to hear. And I'm sure that we as Christians want a world where this is possible for everyone, where Christian communities flourish and where people are free to share about their faith. In summary, there are three ways in which a local church can help starting to create this world. Firstly, through prayer. We pray for believers using the prayer points. And in just a moment, I'm going to be leading you in prayer. We have the challenge to give to BMS. The I Will Stand appeal, supporting Christians in hard conditions, in those small ways, in larger ways, and in ways as a church, as we've just seen. Also, those of us who have access to, are comfortable with, and use social media, we're enabled to encourage more people, and we're challenged to encourage more people to pray and to give. Yesterday, as I was uh, exploring your historic uh, town, not city yet, town, I uh, took a number of photos of uh, this church building, the castle, the uh, commemorative plaque to the 17 people who are uh, Protestants who were burnt for their faith and so on. And I uh, sent them to some 15 or 20 people, close family members, friends of mine in various locations over the country so that what I'm sharing with you today and the location and yourselves are in their prayers. The challenge, if, if you're internet savvy, if you can do it, why, why not begin to share some of these wonderful tales that I have been privileged to allude to through this presentation? Pray, give and share. I'm going to conclude this uh, talk this sharing, this challenge, by leading you now in prayer. Let us pray. We pray first of all for those who are rejected by family 
because of following Jesus, particularly those in North Africa. A believer in North Africa said, I miss my family a lot, but I pray that they would accept me as I am, just as I accept them as they are. We also pray for our own families, our own family situation, those who have yet to come into a saving knowledge of Christ. We pray as well for church planters in Asia facing persecution because of their faith and, thank God, because of their success. We're reminded of those 30 families living in that village, of whom 22 have now come to know Jesus. And we join our prayers with our fellow believer Kay in that area. One day it will become an entirely Christian village. What a challenge. What vision. And we pray for isolated Christians, giving thanks for our freedom and our contact with one another. We pray especially for those in the Middle East, that they may find fellowship. One of them has said, pray for me to serve God in the right way, wherever he wants. We pray for BMS supported ministries working with those hostile to the gospel, as in North Africa. One believer there has says, pray that God gives us the wisdom and patience to answer the questions of those who come to us. Because sometimes they are really angry. And we pray for that broader vision that I'm sure has inspired and challenged, challenged us today. Pray that thousands may be transformed through the ministries of BMS supported believers in Asia and elsewhere. One of them has said, I have a big desire to preach the gospel because of where I'm living, because my family and my community are not Christian. So please pray for me for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So may the Lord use each one of us. May the Lord use this fellowship to pray, to give, and to share the good news. Amen. you take my order of service and we're going to carry on in prayer as uh, when we won't be doing breakout rooms this week we're going to just do it like we're praying from the front and and uh one particular thing that we're going to be praying about is um david james has tested positive so we're going to be praying for him for a um, quick recovery from COVID. But also, um, when we think about other nations, um, we are not alone today, and we're, as we're going to be praying for Rwanda, which might seem a little bit, <coughs> you know, um, odd, oddball or some other type of phrase, doesn't quite come to mind immediately, but Rwanda, is a country that has lots of needs. It's a, it's a French speaking country with um, 13 million people, not a massive country, but still geographically quite big. Um, and it's still suffering from the genocide in 1994, where over 100 days, 800,000 people were killed. Um, now, one of the good things that's come out of that is that Rwanda now banishes identities. So there's no longer uh, Hutu and Tutsi. They're just Rwandans. Um, wouldn't that be a great thing if we did that in this country? We're no longer some identity, as it were. We're Christians. 
So I'll lead us in prayers for Rwanda and also we'll pray for David as well. Just let the Holy Spirit lead us. So Father, we come before you acknowledging that you are the creator of all things seen and unseen. There is nothing beyond your power and our imagination as wide and as high as it might be still cannot imagine your greatness and your authority and your ability to do anything and everything that you choose to do. We know, Lord, that there have been a lot of people suffering throughout this land and throughout this world in this time of COVID. It's been a most difficult time for us as, a, as your creation. Lord, we desperately need your help. And one of our members, Father, has been tested positive, as you know, and we want to lift him to you and his family. So we pray, Lord, that you would touch your hand on David's life today. Reach out to him. You know that we love him dearly. And we know that you love him more dearly than we do. Please, Lord, command your angels to minister to him and comfort him. We pray for all of those who are sick and ill in our congregation at the moment. And I know we have names and people on a, a flashing around our minds, people that are with us uh, in, in our fellowship, but not with us today presently. We lift them to you. And pray for your healing touch in their lives. For those who can't make it to church, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would draw close to them and comfort them. We think further afield for our land and the, the trauma that, that we seem to go through as we read the news week on week. There's always bad news. There's always more bad news. And as the reporters say this week, our democracy has been threatened with the stabbing of that politician. I pray, Lord, that you will protect this land and keep it a free, democratic land. I pray, Lord, that you would work against the powers of fascism and extremism in this land. And I know, Lord, you work in ways of peace and love. And you ask us to pray for those people that are caught up in the extremities of persecution and those who are persecuting. So we do pray for the persecutors, Lord, that they would somehow just see that light that you offer them. And just like that Indian guy that we heard of earlier who was persecuting people. We pray that people in this land who are persecuting will grab hold of your word somehow, someplace, and just read how much that you love them. We pray even further afield, Lord, for the country of Rwanda, that even some over 20 years later still suffering from that horrendous time where the the simple platitudes and the, the pats on the back just were not deep enough to heal those wounds only you can heal those wounds lord so i pray that those people will be healed and won't seek vengeance won't seek revenge <coughs> We we'll pray for that land as it is uh, an upcoming Christian land where 98% of the population profess a faith in you. I pray, Lord, for a, a revival in that land, that it will be known as a land that praises you and worships you and is intent on peace and not war. Lord, we lift Rwanda to you and let those 
those days, those hundred days, be a reminder for them that never again will they visit such a horrendous time. And I pray, Lord, as we remember things in this country about war, where we have our, our, uh, our memorials and our statues, I pray, Lord, that they would help us remember that war is not good, not to be celebrated. And help us, Lord, to work towards peace wherever we are, even with our friends and our families. I pray, Lord, for peace in our lives. And wherever we meet people that, that don't believe in you, I pray, Lord, that you would give us the peace that we need for that moment knowing that you are God and only you can save. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Holy Spirit. And with all of our prayers and petitions, we lay them before you and submit them to you, just as you ask us to. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God gives us something that is amazing. <laughs> we call it grace, don't we? Which is the title of our next song, Amazing Grace. God, my 
So we're going to have one more song in a moment, but I just wanted to say that, of course, everybody is invited to stay. Uh, we're going to have super roles together and, uh, yeah, and be vulnerable before each other as we spill our soup down our tops, which is fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and our, our last hymn today is a more traditional uh, harvest song. Uh, so we plough the fields and scatter. And... Um, and just makes me think of this, the scattering seed uh, dispenser there. And what we do when we go about, and as David has encouraged us today, with our, with our presence before people, we, we just become the testimony of God to them as we witness to them. So with that in mind, over this next week, Let's go out into the fields and scatter the good news of Jesus. Scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the storm in winter, the warmth to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. All good gifts around. His children He gives our daily bread All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all His love We thank Thee then, O oh Father time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. Accept the gifts we offer for all thy love imparts, and what thou most desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven
So um, be blessed. Go out into all the world this week. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So uh, hold on a second. Let's get some instructions. How's this going to work? Okay.